next video in my series of my top 10 Victorian novels ever. And the next on the list is an author I hadn't spoken about yet, and it's only my second book of his to read, and that is The Woodlanders by Thomas Hardy. Prior to reading this, I had only read Under the Greenwood Tree, and I have to admit I was somewhat underwhelmed. But knowing that it was his shortest book, I decided to read it during a readathon, and I just wanted to sample his writing, and so I didn't feel that disappointed being underwhelmed by that particular book because I knew it wasn't really as talked about. There was a sweet mini series I had seen a few years prior, but I hadn't really heard a lot of people talk about it. So last October, I picked up The Woodlanders. I did it as a buddy read with Katie from Books and Things, and I am so glad I read another Thomas Hardy because now this has spurred me on to want to read many, many more of his works. But I will say they are an emotional roller coaster. This just broke my heart. I can still now, a year out, remember exactly all of the deep-seated and just heavy emotions I was feeling upon finishing this. It is very, very intense. The Woodlanders is set in a wooded area. And so just like in Sylvia's Lovers, how all of the economy, the geography, the, um, you know, the culture, all of the income of the town is based on the sea and Sylvia's lovers. All of the income of the town in the Woodlanders is based on the woods. So the woods, uh, Thomas Hardy is especially good at doing this with his settings that makes them so vivid and so uh, poignant and such a part of the story that they, the setting is almost its own character. It just seems so significant to the story that you can't imagine this story happening any other place. And we, it starts out, you know, where we meet Grace Melberry, who has been away from home and she has been being educated. Her father thought, you know, she needed more than just a small town life. So she has gone off to school and she comes down, she comes back to her hometown and she's very different than the girl who left, you know, this young woman who comes back, who has been educated and a lot more educated than her peers and the other people in the town. And so it's this sort of isolating factor for her. She had a childhood sweetheart, uh, Giles Winterborn, and they were, you know, really sweet on each other when they were young, but she comes back and it seems that they might not have as quite as much in common as she thought. She still really cares for him, but it just feels different after she comes back. And then another intriguing element to add to the plot is a young, educated, and cultured, and handsome Dr. Fitzpiers comes to town. And I think that Grace is just very fascinated by him. He's so different, and he's not from this small town, and he might not be here forever, and he's, you know, he's going places, he's doing things, and he seems more her intellectual equal. And so there is lots of love triangle drama. Grace is very torn, and her father kind of changes his mind over who he thinks will be good enough for her. But this is a story that you're going to get pulled in. Your emotions are going to get pulled in. Katie from Books and Things says that Thomas Hardy is so good at having such emotional force in his uh, books. And this is so true. I just felt so drawn to the characters. And there were so many scenes that were really simple things happening, taking a walk through the woods. And it just felt so significant. Every page in this feels really significant to the plot. And the woods, like I said, are almost their own kind of character. So there are characters having secret meetings and uh, just, you know, the woods are allowing for different elements of the plot to happen. I think this novel feels incredibly human. There are lots of characters that feel so flesh and blood. Grace in particular, I just think she's an excellent, excellent character. And it's also full of miscommunication and misunderstandings, which I think is such a thing that we all can relate to. There all have been times when, no, no, I didn't mean that at all. You know, when, when I said that, I meant this, and people don't understand you. And I think there's lots of people not understanding one another, Grace being misunderstood in particular. And in addition to that, there are other characters who I think um, as side characters really lend themselves well to the plot. And there's one character in particular, Marty, who is in love with Giles and he is just 
utterly oblivious that she is so head over heels for him. And it's really sad. You really feel for her because she is just, she will always remain in love with him. I really appreciate all of the information and tidbits you hear about the changing seasons in this and how that really can affect the characters and the fate of the characters. Just, I love how much of a part nature plays in this story. And I've heard that that's basically the case with all of his books, so I really can't wait to read more Thomas Hardy. But it is pretty emotionally taxing, so I'm not gonna like binge through them or anything, but I definitely want to eventually read all of his. So it is a very romantic, very typically Victorian novel in that there are these uh, characters who will reflect during very mundane moments and have these really deep, poignant thoughts. And so her father is, Grace's father is observing her. The family had gone into the parlor and were still absorbed in themselves. The fire was as before the only light and it irradiated Grace's face and hands so as to make them look wondrously smooth and fair beside those of the two elders, shining also through the loose hair about her temples as sunlight through a break. Her father was surveying her in a dazed conjecture. So much had she developed and progressed in manner and in stature since he at last had set eyes on her. I really love that, how it's just this really average moment that's happening, but he's really taking things in and, and observing things. And then another one, just every moment is so significant in this. It says, when dinner was over, Grace took a candle and began to ramble pleasurably through the rooms of her old home from when she had latterly become well nigh an alien. Each nook and each object revived a memory and simultaneously modified it. The chamber seemed lower than they had appeared on any previous occasion of her return. The surfaces of both walls and ceiling standing in such near relations to the eye that it could not avoid taking microscopic note of their irregularities in old fashion. Her own bedroom wore at once a look more familiar than when she had left it, and yet a face estranged. The world of little things therein gazed at her in helpless stationariness, as though they had tried and been unable to make any progress without her presence. Over the place where her candle had been accustomed to stand, when she had used to read in bed till the midnight hour, there was still this brown, soft spot of smoke. She did not know that her father had taken a special care to keep it from being cleaned off. I really appreciate that in books when it shows how place can really affect characters and places staying the same and characters go away and they change and they ebb and they flow and they evolve and they come back and it's it's kind of hard to process sometimes when you've left a place and are such a different person and you come back and things are the same. It's, it's hard to process. I really do recommend The Woodlanders. Highly introspective and just deeply uh, emotional and I really did enjoy it. So I will see you guys for another bookish video soon and have a lovely day.